Now this video is a response to a question by a student called Lois. Now let's look at the question. The question she asks is this. A hydrometer of mass 20 grams floats in oil of density 0.8 grams per centimeter cube with 5 centimeters of its stem above the liquid. If the cross-sectional area of the stem is 0.4 centimeters cubed, calculate A, the total volume of the hydrometer and the length of its stem out of water when floating on water. As usual, I've written this question on a PowerPoint slide. So let's go straight to my blue board to see how the solution is arrived at. And here we are. So I've uh, drawn this diagram in order for us to be able to understand this question. Now, the first thing I want you to observe is that this object is floating in the liquid. When an object floats, the up thrust on it is equal to its weight in air. That's very important. Up thrust is equal to its weight in air. That is why this hydrometer is floating. It means that uh, there are two forces acting on it. One of it is its own weight vertically downwards and the other one is the force exerted by the liquid on it upwards and that is the force we refer to as up thrust. Now since it is floating, you know, the only object or the only medium which is supporting it is the liquid. We don't have any string or somebody holding it onto the other side. Then it is in equilibrium and therefore the two forces balance out. The weight must be equal to, I mean the weight which acts downwards must be equal to the up thrust. And this stems from the law of flotation. And of course we can work out the weight of this hydrometer by multiplying its mass in kilograms by the value of the gravitational field strength. Its mass is 20 grams. So I'm going to divide that by 1000 to convert the 20 grams into kilograms. And then I multiply it by the value of the gravitational field strength, uh, 10 Newton per kilogram. And I will find that the weight of this hydrometer is 0 0.2 Newtons. And by working out the weight of the hydrometer, I know the up thrust which is acting on it. And then I go to the usual statement of Archimedes principle, which states that up thrust is given by the density of the fluid in which the object is immersed, the volume of the liquid displaced times the gravitational field strength. So at this point, on the left hand side, I know the up thrust is 0.2. The density of the liquid in which it is floating is 0.8 grams per centimeter cubed. So over here, there's a negative here, sorry. At this point, we can convert 0.8 grams per centimeter cubed into kilograms per meter cubed by multiplying this value by 1000. And you are going to get... Of course, over here, when I write 0 0.2, I should have put an equal sign. There's an equal sign. The density is 800. That is the density of the liquid in which it is floating. The volume of the uh, liquid displaced is V times, of course, the value of G, which is 10. And when you manipulate this, you're going to get the volume of the liquid displaced to be 25 centimeters cubed. Of course, from this calculation, you're going to get that it is uh, 2.5 by 10 raised to minus 5 centimeters meters cubed. And this translates into 25 centimeters cubed. So that is the volume of the liquid which is displaced. Notice that we've got this extra volume of the hydrometer up there and the question is asking us to calculate the total volume of the hydrometer. So the volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the volume of the hydrometer which is immersed. So in order to get the total volume of the hydrometer, 
I've got to add the volume of this section. And I can work out the volume of this section because I know that the cross-sectional area of this tube here is 0 0.4 centimeters uh, cubed. Of course, uh, it is centimeters squared. I've messed around there also. Sectional area is always in uh, centimeters squared or meters squared. So this one will be 0 0.4 centimeters squared times the length, which we have been told is 5 centimeters. And this one is what will give me 2 centimeters cubed. So this is the volume of the hydrometer above the water. So the total volume of the hydrometer or V total is equal to the volume below the, or the liquid which is 25 centimeters cubed plus the volume above which is 2 centimeters cubed and the total volume will be 27 centimeters cubed. That is how I would work out part A of this question. Now part B. In part B, I'm required to calculate the length of its stem out of water when floating on water. Water. At this point, I think the, the question must have told me to assume that the density of water is 1,000 uh, kilograms per meter cubed or 1 gram per centimeter cubed. So check if this constant was given because it is important. And most examination bodies, by the way, they will always give such constants. So be careful to check either on the first page of the paper or just next to the question. So I suspect this constant here must have been given. So given that the volume, the density of the water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, and now this hydrometer is immersed in water. Notice that it is immersed in a, a liquid with a much higher density. So it's going to sink less. In other words, not much of it will be below the liquid. A lot of it will be above the liquid. However, we are going to tell that as soon as we calculate the volume of the water displaced. Again, we know that the upthrust must be equal to the weight of the hydrometer. Again, the weight of the hydrometer is 0 0.2. And uh, upthrust is the density of water times the volume of the hydrometer immersed times the value of the gravitational field strength. The density of the water is 1,000. The volume of the hydrometer immersed is V, and then this one is uh, 10. And this shows that the volume of the water displaced will be, I think it will be 20 by 10 minus 6 centimeters, meters cubed, sorry. And uh, that means this one is going to be equal to 20 centimeters cubed. I'm doing all these conversions because for you to use this equation effectively, you must work with SI units because upthrust is in newtons and for you to get newtons definitely, like for example here, for you to convert the weight of the object into newtons, you had to use the mass of the object in kilograms so that you can effectively use the gravitational field strength which is newton per kilogram that is why you see me converting from one unit to the other it's just a requirement but then i've got to revert to centimeters cubed because you can see the question is in terms of centimeters and centimeters cubed so this will be the volume of the water displaced that means that the volume of the hydrometer below the water is 20 centimeters cubed. So the volume of the stem, I'm going to write this one here, V, not stem, V stem is going to be equal to the total volume of the hydrometer, which is 27 
centimeters cubed minus the volume immersed 20 centimeters cubed and of course that is going to give me 7 centimeters cubed and of course for me to get the 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 height or the length of the stem out of water when floating on water then i've got to just to remember that this stem has a cross section area there and then this is the height or the length so for me to know that i know the total volume volume is equals to cross section area times the height this height here so this volume is 7 the cross section area is 0 0.4 i need to know the height and that height becomes 7 divided by 0 0.4 and this will give me 17.5 centimeters. So this will be the length of the stem outside the water or above the water surface. Again confirming that when you get this hydrometer, you immerse it in a liquid of a higher density, it is going to be immersed less. In other words, it's going to sink less because previously the stem that was above the liquid surface was 5 centimeters when it was immersed in uh, this liquid of a lower density now when we immerse the same hydrometer in water of a higher density the height above the water will be 17.5 centimeters and that question was just as simple as that so go through the question if you've got any other question please post them below any of my videos and do not forget to subscribe so that many students can be aware of this problem solving style.